recorded in Chicago, Illinois, with your hosts, Ken, Matt, Neil, and Jeff. This is Triviality. The cream of the crop. Hello and welcome to Triviality, the game where a lack of seriousness meets a little bit of knowledge. My name is Neil. I'm here with Jeff and Ken. We're really excited to record today, and I'm going to try to say as much as I can in one breath without having to uh, breathe. And uh, I did not do drugs this morning. <laughs> I, uh, I'm taking a huge breath here to see how my lung capacity is working. But we're very, very excited because we have United States champion Aaron Barclay and Intercontinental champion Brent Bullmeyer joining us from the Sports Trivia Faceoff. A wonderful podcast that we hope you guys check out. I couldn't even do that, and I wasn't speaking. I'm exhausted already. I know. Wow. I didn't have the uh, air capacity there because um, I just ate right before we did this, so I probably could have d- gone a little bit longer, but uh, it was enough where I didn't pass out. Yeah, well, I imagine was... had Neil not eaten, he could have done the whole show that way. Yeah, that was an exciting yeah. intro, I got to <laughs> say, but I, I suppose it's because we're excited for our guests who you mentioned. We are really excited for our guests. Uh, we talked right before we recorded, and we said, you know what, you know who these folks are. They're awesome. They're friends of ours. They've been listeners of the show forever, and we've had them on many, many times. I believe this episode is their fourth time hosting, but we're super excited to have them here. Uh, they are the uh, co-hosts of the Sports Trivia Faceoff podcast, one of our favorite podcasts, because we don't know anything about sports, and the man who does know about sports... Matthew, uh, as we're going to call him today, is not here. He's AWOL. He is AWOL. Uh, apparently, Patrick Mahomes uh, needed a very special type of Gatorade uh, that isn't in existence. So Matt is out there trying to get it, and we didn't have the heart to tell him that... Is that a uh, football thing? It is a football thing. Um, we didn't have the heart to tell him that uh, it wasn't actually Patrick Mahomes who was calling. It was uh, a guy that we met on uh, Orleans in Ontario and Chicago on as the street. As a completely brief aside, are you very sad we don't have Mahomes and we have the current quarterback we have? Oh, no. Wait, Mahomes is here. How's it going, man? I'm doing great. I'm <laughs> I have a football game. That's, another, that's, a, that's a football reference because he sounds like a frog. I think so. you need to workshop that one a little bit longer. <laughs> um, but no, let's uh, <laughs> let's get to our special guests here who are super excited uh, about having uh, Brent and Aaron. How's it going, guys? Going well. Going you? well. You seem like you got your coffee machine fixed. Yes. Uh, yeah. What Aaron? Very fast. What Aaron is referring to, uh, we were about to record, and we had to email and say uh, we had a coffee incident. And uh, basically what happened, uh, my coffee machine, you might have heard it on previous episodes. The uh, <laughs> It's hard to edit out. <laughs> yeah, the machine grinds the beans before it makes them. And uh, we started grinding beans, and all of a sudden it made this weird noise like... And Ken said, that's not good. And uh, it, it was jammed. So we had to work collectively to clean the beans out, vacuum the beans, clean the machine... Jeff manhandled the, um, I don't even know what you call Said it. the, the word? <laughs> manhandling? <laughs> well, he did, because I, I tried pulling Being this Being both thing. a man who handled it? That makes sense. Well, I tried pulling something out, and you're like, here, let me do it. And then Jeff pulled it, and he goes, see, I'm a man. And so... I needed validation today. Uh, but no, we fixed it. Very Ken, toxic. Ken Very vacuumed. Toxic. And how's the coffee tasting? Did it work? It's delicious. Uh, well, why don't you guys uh, tell our listeners, uh, some of them I know are fans of Sports Trivia Face Off and have been on the show, but uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about the show um, and uh, you know how long you've been doing it and everything, so that way we can uh, really get people to uh, come over and hang out with you. We are the Sports Trivia Face Off. We are what we believe to be the oldest sports trivia exclusive trivia podcast out there. We've been doing it for, oh, it's run since night since uh, April of 2018, and uh, we have our game featured formatted in kind of a hockey theme where we have three periods and two intermissions and then an overtime question. So we keep it everything very sports conscientious, very sports centered. Um, if you're the kind of guy who can remember uh, what position Kurt Rambis played for the Lakers, you're the kind of guy for our podcast or gal. I cannot remember that thing that Brent just said, which is why he has me hosting, because every time I play, I embarrass myself. <laughs> I, you could ask me a question from the episode we just recorded, and I probably wouldn't know the answer. But you learned what it like that gives. sometimes. I yeah. did. Yeah. No, I'm just the color guy. I don't actually have any real knowledge to contribute. Aaron and I are on the same wavelength. I don't remember anything that I said or learned any, on any episode that I record. <laughs> For any reason. For any ever. reason ever. Because <laughs> uh, in our in our great Facebook group that all, all of you have been joining, I think we're at 666 today, which I'm really excited <laughs> about. Um, nice. I almost don't want anyone to join for a day or two. Yeah. In, in the comment thread of an episode, I'll often hear like, Neil, I can't believe you said that. Or that was funny, Neil. And I have no idea what they're talking about. So I just stay out of it. So <laughs> I don't want to comment either way in case it was good or bad. 
Um, so you've been doing the show for a while now, and uh, we've had some guests on the show who uh, have competed, and they've loved it, uh, even on our, our Blood Sports series, which is currently airing. Uh, we had Marcus Ellis, who's been on the show quite a few times, Gary Middleton, and even our own Matt uh, has been on the show. Um, but today, you're actually just sort of um, stepping into uh, your hosting shoes for a normal format game. Is that right? That's yep. correct. We have all sorts of fun categories for you, not limited to just sports, although there might be a slight bias towards sports in a couple of places uh well we're really excited uh is there anything else new in your life other than uh almost getting the five timers uh jacket for hosting the show <laughs> there wow, better be I, an actual jacket don't yeah. tease me it we'll, needs to we'll look have like it the one we'll on, have it produced uh, but you uh, have to pay for it holy said, moly. <clears throat> or maybe we should do a, a new patreon tier where we we ship jackets to the five timers <laughs> all right that sounds good <laughs> you guys can put it in my box Yes, that's that right. sounds good. Um, all right, well, um, I guess uh, we should just throw it to the rules, guys, since it is a normal format yeah, game. Hopefully, he'll do it like a soccer announcer. Ooh, I like that. Let's see what he does. The rules of the game are simple. 20 questions split into two rounds worth 10 points apiece. At halftime, there'll be a special swing round designed by this week's host. After regulation, players will enter the final round with the points that they've accumulated and will have a chance to wager 0 to 30 points on five categorized questions. At the end of the game, someone will be named the cream of the crop. I am the cream. Well, um, it, that was the longest recording Darren has ever done. Well, I think yeah, that last breath he held pretty long. I think for the listeners, if you're looking at your uh, your timeline, I think that was about a two minute hold on the last word. Yeah, yeah. he definitely had you beat. I know he did. So he's got better lung capacity. <laughs> what can I say? Uh, well, I think we're gonna play a three for all, right? Because yep. Matt's not here. So uh, all right. Uh, well, let's uh, let's get going. If you guys are good. All right, the first half, I'm going to start out. We're going to alternate. Basically, what happened is uh, Aaron wrote 10 questions, I wrote 10 questions, and we're going to alternate between the two and the two halves. So question number one will be from me. The category is We Are Family. And the question is, what is the complete term for your aunt's and uncle's grandchildren? Yeah, so I always found this confusing, and um, I think I looked it up one time, so I'm going to lock in... Okay, I'm going to lock in. I think we all understand um, that we're playing with the first, second cousins and then stages of removal. Yep. Right? So yeah, I think I'm fine. I think we all understand that. It's just how how to, how to it breaks down. So we're all good? I think so. I, I'm unsure of my answer, but uh, I guess I can start. I believe your aunt's children would be your cousins, first cousin, I suppose, uh, and their kids, their Great, or did we say great grandchildren or grandchildren? Grandchildren. Okay, grandchildren. yeah. So then um, I said that would be your second cousin, and I know there's some sort of removal going on uh, or impeachment of uh, family members. So um, I said second cousin uh, once removed. So um, <clears throat> I could be wrong. I think the way this works is um, the removal is, uh, is what generation they are separated from you. <clears throat> so. Um, Seeing as how these are your cousin's children, your cousins are your first cousin, so you'd be your first cousin once removed, I believe. And I said first cousin once removed. And the correct answer is first cousins once removed. Yes, Very I well learned done, a guys. thing, guys. I learned one thing. Yay. We have a bit in my family that um, removed means you had a big fight and they kicked you out of the family. And if you had two big fights, they're twice removed. <laughs> Jeez, hey, I'd, I'd just... be on my 4,000th removal by now. <laughs> Question two. Category is silly science words. A satellite of a satellite is called a moon moon. What is the equally adorable portmanteau term that astronomers are giving to moons that leave the orbit of their planets and begin orbiting the system's sun instead? I am locked in. All I'm thinking is Warren Moon for some reason. <laughs> uh, um, I gonna... could be further off. It is possible. Yeah. Um... I have a guess because I, I don't know anything about science, so I'm locked in. I can't remember what these are called. They're like sad, like lonely things uh, just, you know, thrown about the, the solar system. But I thought these were rogue moons. Oh, that sounds really okay. cool. It uh, does sound cool. It's probably wrong, but it sounds cool. I just said uh, it was a moon star. And I said an adopted moon. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like all of those better than the actual answer, which is plunet. Oh, oh I've heard of plunets. Yeah. Plunet. Cute. Luna. Number three, guiding lights is the category, and it's a multiple choice, red, green, or white. 
Which color navigation light is found on the port side of a boat or ship? Ooh, that's tough. Um, it's a toss-up for me, so I am locked in. So it's just a matter of figuring out which side of the boat is the port. I can't remember if it's the back or the front. What if I told you it's neither? <laughs> <laughs> You're like Morpheus. What if I told you that it was neither? Before? You think that's air you're breathing right now? Uh, yep. so, oh, so it's not the front of the back. It's the side. Interesting. Could be. Okay. So you could be the top or there, the bottom too. And you said, uh, Brent, you... it was between red, green, and white. That's correct. Are you telling me that you don't know which side of the boat the port is, but you know by looking at a boat what side that light would be on? I think so. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I don't spend much time at sea. I've never been in a boat moving far, uh, farther than, uh, you know, about 100 yards. But I think I have an idea. 100 yards? So we know, 100 knots, or maybe. So that's, a, that's a long way. It's pretty, pretty fast. Um, we know it's well established that Ken hates boat movies. But the question here is, does Ken know anything about boats? Uh, so what did you say, Neil? What, uh, what side? Um, I said port uh, apparently was in the middle of the boat. Right, but what What's color? The color? Oh. <laughs> Uh, I went with red. <laughs> we should have just let him get that one wrong. I, too, uh, went red for some reason. I said green. And the correct answer is red. Oh, green yes. is on the starboard side. Bastard. So, uh, quick shorthand, uh, the words left and port are both four letters. So, Oh, that makes sense. Well, the reason I thought it was red is I've seen boats, you know, just kind of gliding by. And I noticed there's always sort of a triangular um, focus to the middle where that red light is probably so that you can see it a little bit better. Maybe I, I presume know. Neil's boat exposure is just on docks. They never actually go anywhere. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably In right. Ibiza. Number four, a category is Burt Reynolds. Ooh. Yeah. It was going to be an Archer reference, but none of y'all would have gotten it. True. So here we go. Between 1978 and 1982, Burt was the number one box office star. This is a record he shares with what American singer and actor who was a leader in record sales, radio ratings, and motion picture grosses from 1931 to 1954, and who in 1946 was dubbed the most admired man alive ahead of both Jackie Robinson and the Pope? I think I have a good, a good guess. All right, I'm locked in. Sounds like a Neil question. Uh, there's a lot of people like that who double dipped back in those days. I guess still today. There were fewer people back then. That one, the jo that one uh, Jonas brother is doing movies now too. Nick is, yeah. Harry Styles on his second, yeah, second movie. They're getting around. Jonas Brothers were just in Chicago. I didn't realize it, and I was upset yeah, I didn't it. go. And then they had a private show at Cobra Lounge afterwards with the original Jonas Band that doesn't play together anymore, like the original court. Oh, court that band. was real. The Cobra Lounge thing. Yeah, oh, they were I there. thought that was a joke. <laughs> That's like a punk rock bar. <laughs> is it really? Yeah. Uh, I'm lost here. Okay, I'm in. Um, I, I, yeah, I am lost as well, but I, I'll lock in an answer. So for my answer, um, there was a guy who, uh, was very, very popular. I don't know if this is right though. He's in a lot of movies and he's, and he was, uh, just kind of beloved. Uh, I put Bing Crosby. Yeah, that's yeah. a really good answer. Um, <clears throat> maybe I'm thinking back to something that, uh, happened uh, in a recording yesterday, but won't probably come out till after this episode. Uh, and I could not get my mind off of Al Jolson for some reason. So I said Al Jolson. And as for me, I know it's a little too early, but I went with Frank Sinatra. All right. I mean, Jeff nailed it. Bing Crosby was a good answer. It is, in fact, the correct answer. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Yeah, so nice job, Neil. I always find it interesting. Uh, he had such a rivalry with um, Frank Sinatra because he kind of came before Frank. When Frank came, he was sort of the new kid on the block getting um, all the all the love. And uh, until they, well, until he died, they both kind of had this uh, friendly rivalry with each other, kind of like a Stallone um Schwarzenegger a little bit yeah and he stole his nickname too because uh I think Bing Crosby's eyes weren't blue but he was just called old eyes yeah right <laughs> I think that's correct yeah there's a, a fascinating story uh Sinatra's daughter told about when they did their Christmas specials Bing Crosby uh didn't like singing live so he would always sing from tape but Frank Sinatra always wanted to sing live and uh they kind of had a weird recording schedule there where one had to lip sync and the other one had to sing on, on the spot hmm. Number five, back home again. Speaking of actor singers, what Midwestern state capital city hosted Elvis Presley's final concert? Oh, capital cities. Love it. All right, I'm locked in. I don't know. I'm just going to have to take a guess. And I feel like it's probably like a random city because maybe he didn't plan on retiring early, obviously. Um, um, all right, I'm, I'm locked in with a very random guess. Yeah, same. Same. All right, I'm just going, I don't know if this is the capital. I think it is St. Paul. 
I went with, for some reason, Madison, Wisconsin. I went to uh, St. Louis, Missouri. There was a bar- there was a subtle clue buried in the category back home again. There's a famous song back home again in Indiana. The answer is Indianapolis. Hmm. That was my second guess. Uh. Right, number six category is badass bitches. All right. I don't know if I can say that or not. Yeah, sure. Yeah, why not? All right. Bell Hooks' book, Ain't I a Woman, examines the effects of racism and sexism on black women and takes a look at the civil rights and feminism movements. The title, Ain't I a Woman, was taken from an 1851 extemporaneous speech by what woman, a former slave and well-known anti-slavery speaker? Yeah, I'm good. Same. I am good on that as well. All right. I'm going to go with Harriet Tubman. All right. Uh, I actually went with Sojourner Truth. Oh, that's a better as did answer. I, I went, went Sojourner dumb. Truth. Neil and Jeff picking up points. It was Sojourner Truth. I'm stupid. I actually <laughs> happen to have, have read um, parts of that piece, so. Yeah, it's really well done. It's amazing. I'm yeah. Bell Hooks, actually. I, I was just in a rush there. I don't, I don't know what's wrong with me. Number seven, ABC. In the NATO phonetic alphabet, what word is used to represent the letter U? And there is a hint available if you'd like it. That's okay. I'll take the hint because Jeff probably knows this one off the top of his Fine. head. Okay. The hint is it begins with the letter U. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. <laughs> Love it. You got me. Underhanded throw to Brent. Um, <laughs> you said uh, NATO phonetic alphabet, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Just going to write write out my alphabet. I think I'm good. I'm between two things, and I had like I'm going to screw I'm going to screw up. <laughs> I cut it down from five, so hopefully one of them's right. All right. So we know Alpha Bravo Charlie Delta. Uh, Ein- there. Echo, Einstein. Foxtrot. Golf, uh, Frankenstein. Hotel. I know. I do know most of these. This is a tricky one. Indigo, I, I think, is one. I'm just trying to go. Th- uh, uh, India? India. India. Oh, India. Yeah. I don't know why I keep thinking U is Utah. I think it's because I'm thinking of Keanu and Point Break when when there's also a, Johnny Utah. There's also a couple different phonetic alphabets. I don't know. I'm just gonna say Utah. I have no idea. Yeah, that was my second guess. I went with umbrella, though. Hmm. I I think it might be uniform. That might beat that, too. Yeah, I think you're right. That is correct. It is uniform. Shouldn't have slept in today. Much like Ken with the uh, 12 labors of Hercules, I once sat down and I was like, I'm learning this <laughs> alphabet. I, I did, too, but, <laughs> but apparently I forgot it. Question eight. Category is blatant pandering. What TV series was named after the General Motors exhibit of the 1939 World's Fair? It depicted what they thought in 1939 things would look like at a date later than the date at which the exhibit was occurring. Oh, I'm locked in. And I'm, I'm just trying to decide if the show was an older show or if it is kind of like Tomorrowland where, you know, it sounds new, but... Yeah. And I'm, yeah, I'm just going to say um, World of Tomorrow, but I don't know if that's a show or not. Um, I, I just actually went with Futurama. Oh, that's a good guess. <laughs> Uh, as did I. I went Futurama. Oh, boy. Yeah. I, I promise English is my first language. The question was worded because I didn't want to write the word future in the question because the answer is Futurama. I sort of remember there's a there's an episode where they do like an old-timey film reel and they're like, Futurama. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I, yeah, I'm pretty sure I remembered it coming from there. But I don't know why I assumed it was like an old series. Yeah. But I did. Yeah, that's all right, though. I For some reason, I thought maybe it was a trick, and it was like Battlestar Galactica, and GM had a car called the Galactica, but... I got really <laughs> enthusiastic about locking in, so I tried not to make eye contact with you after that. This, this is why you don't <laughs> skip breakfast, kids. Yeah, yeah. Number nine. The category is Raise the Roof. Hmm. The Sky Dome in Toronto was the world's first baseball stadium to feature a retractable roof. Which National Hockey League team used to play in an arena with a roof that opened? I'm going to lock in. I don't know uh, anything about hockey, uh, but um, I think I know two teams that could play in a, a stadium that has a retractable roof for a baseball team, maybe. So I'm going to lock in with uh, with a guess. I went a little bit further south, thought maybe it was a dedicated hockey stadium where they used to open the roof, and maybe now they just decided that they're not going to open it at all anymore. So um, I actually went to Tampa Bay. Uh, I thought maybe it could have been a, an Arizona team. I don't know if there is an Arizona team. I was thinking of the Diamondbacks Stadium. And then... Coyotes. Oh, it is Coyotes? Okay. Yeah. So that I was trying to think of Arizona. And then I was thinking the Houston Astros, I thought, had a retractable roof. But I don't know if there's a hockey team in Houston. So then I just settled on Dallas Stars. And uh, I'm just going for the hometown advantage and going for the uh, Blackhawks. Because I know they used to play in Chicago Stadium, which I don't know much about. But maybe uh, maybe it was multipurpose. 
And the answer is the Pittsburgh Penguins, Ooh. the old Melon Arena. The roof opened, and it was featured in the very forgettable oh, Jean Claude no. Van Damme Face film, off. Sudden, Sudden, Death. Sudden Death. That's right. <laughs> I can't forget it. God, I love that movie. And I, I totally forgot. About I didn't that. even think of that because uh, he takes Powers Booth up through the retractable roof, and then he he falls Die Hard style, and I totally dies. forgot about that. What? Do, wh- and then don't they crash a helicopter into the arena at the end of it or something? <laughs> yeah. So at the end, the helicopter goes through the retractable roof, and there's a shot where it's like in slow motion going. Foom, foom, from, from, as it hits the the ice and just you know blows up. And yet the most unrealistic part is Jean Claude Van Damme playing goalie for like ten minutes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Well, he yeah he he, uh, he had to do it for his son. So. Oh, they parody that in the office in the uh, and, and Michael his, Scarn. Yeah, yeah. And his record is one point oh oh oh. And number ten in the news, a mysterious human in the Richmond, Virginia area was featured in cheerful news reports nationwide in August. In acts that were deemed weird but harmless, this individual was leaving what on people's front porches? <laughs> I'm locked in. <laughs> oh, I remember this story. I'm trying to... I think I've got the right person. I'm locked in too. I know I saw this and I I cannot remember. And all that is in my head right now is Billy Madison when uh, when he, call, he called... He called... Poo! Um... <laughs> 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 the old man. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna say he put. Um, I'm just gonna say I know it's wrong. A hotel pillow mint. <laughs> I can't remember if this guy was like leaving televisions or had a television for a head, but I sort of remember like somebody leaving weird stuff on people's doorsteps. So I said a television. Yeah, I think it was tube TVs. Yep, Jeff is right on both counts. He had a CRT TV on his head and was then leaving them on people's porches. <laughs> All right. So I started strong and I ended strong. I'm yeah. glad he was deemed ultimately harmless. <laughs> they did, yeah. Looks like that was a uh, tough round for me. Uh, I got 20 points. I kind of the bed there. Um, Neil's doing slightly better. Uh, he's got 40 points and uh, Jeff's leading it uh, with 60 points. So you have a swing round ready for us. Yes, this is a sports-based what's my line swing round i'm going to give you 10 athletes and all you need to do is tell me what sport they are famously associated with okay number one mini minoso number two peekaboo street number three willie moscone number four willie shoemaker number five nino niederreiter number six will power Number seven, Gail Monfils. Number eight, Dick Weber. Number nine, Eddie Betts. And number 10, Sachin Tendulkar. Well, I'm glad Matt's not here to wipe the floor with us. So. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be tough. But in the meantime, uh, you want to tell us a little bit about Patreon? Yes, thank you. Uh, it's a huge, huge thank you to all of our patrons uh, who directly support the show. As you know, we don't run any advertisements or anything like that. So our patrons are our sponsors. They are the reason that we exist. And we are really, really grateful and appreciative of all the support we get in that capacity. If you'd like to join our patrons, you can go to patreon.com slash triviality podcast. There's a link in the show notes where we offer little bonus extras just as a way to give back uh, what little we can as a thank you for that. So um there's really not much more to say about that. If you want to support us in that capacity, we'd be really appreciative. Uh, I did the math. If you support us at our lowest tier, it's only three cents a day, not a dollar a day, gentlemen. But uh, uh, anything that you can do to support would be great. And also, you can always just uh, you know tell somebody about the show, rate and review us. That's also very, uh, very much welcomed. And another way to support the show is to check out our shop, which we've been kind of neglecting lately. Yeah, we've got... Excellent merch with our partners inked and screened. Uh, the t-shirts are some of the most comfortable things I own. Uh, I rarely wear them, but they are very, very nice. <laughs> and we're working on some new designs? Yep, we've got some new designs in the works. They may already be out by the time this episode has gone up. Um, we're going to be promoting that through our uh, upcoming Season 2 of Bloodsport. So. Nice. Yeah, and there is a promo code on those uh, video episodes of Bloodsport on our YouTube channel. So uh, you can get a percentage off of a special t-shirt that will only be around for the duration of Bloodsport. So uh, feel free to check that out and get the code. And go over to inkedandscreen.com and get some merch. All right, without further ado, let's go over these answers. Number one, Mini Minoso. Well, uh, that sounds like a baseball player to me. Yeah, I believe he was on the Chicago White Sox, so I said baseball. I also said baseball. He was a Chicago White Sox. Baseball's correct. Neil showing us all up. <laughs> Number two, Peekaboo Street. Uh, Peekaboo was always one of my favorite skiers as a child. Same here, skier. So one of the few I knew, I said skiing. 
Skiing is correct. Well done. Number three, Willie Moscone. All right, now we're getting into some strange territory because I have no idea. So I said basketball. I uh, went with football. I guessed football. I didn't put football for any of these. That was stupid. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe not. The answer is pool. He was Ooh. a big pool player. Number four, Willie Shoemaker. Uh, I just guessed that he's a soccer player. I went basketball. I went baseball for this one. Willie Shoemaker was a very famous horse jockey, so horse racing. Mm-hmm. Number four, I'm sorry, number five, Nino Niederreiter. So this one uh, rang familiar to me because he's a hockey player. Oh, good. I went hockey. This one sounded like a hockey player to me. Hockey is correct. Well done. It's on the wild. I think that's where most, he is most now. Famously. He's bounced around so. a little bit. Number six, Will Power. Uh, sounds like a great name for a track guy, so I said he's a runner. Um, I thought it was a great name for someone who drives a car, so I went NASCAR. Yeah, I said uh, auto racing. I didn't know how specific you wanted. Yeah, auto racing is is the correct answer, so I'll let you guys find out. He is not NASCAR, a, but he is auto racing, so I'll I let you guys say, decide I what's to do NASCAR with Neil. I say NASCAR is fine. That's yeah. fine, because he, uh, I think he might be an uh, NHRA drag racer. I can't remember. Yeah, no, but he's, uh, I, I think Neil IndyCar. was, IndyCar, Neil was close IndyCar. enough, yeah. Number six, Gail Monfils. Uh, let's say Gail Monfils is a uh, judo expert. Oh, that sounds good. I thought maybe she was a WNBA star, so I said basketball. I went soccer. And the answer is tennis. Mm. Oh, I forgot about tennis. Oh, I'm sorry, dear. Uh, the, the judo of the clay, as they call it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's what they call it. Ah, <laughs> uh, the judo of the clay. <laughs> He's just going to beat the snot out of Rafael Nadal. Is that what's going to happen? Yeah, That's right. Number seven, Dick Weber. Uh, chess master, Dick Weber. Uh, I, I just went football. It's funny you said you said that. I really wanted to go chess master for one of these, but I, I opted not to. I said football. And the answer is bowling. Mm. He was a very famous bowler in the 50s and 60s, kind of pioneered the breakout of bowling. Number nine, Eddie Betts. That's a famous baseball player. Mm. Maybe. <laughs> uh, I went hockey. Uh, I'm, just for the bets, I went horse racing. We threw this one in there because of you guys' love for the sport. He's famous Cricket. in Aussie Rules football. Oh, I th- okay. Yes. It sounded familiar. And number 10, Sashin Tendulkar. Uh, definitely fencing. I actually was going to put fencing, which is funny. Uh, I went with soccer or football. Uh, this one, I said judo. <laughs> Sashin Tendulkar is one of the most famous, most prolific cricket players of all time. At the end of the swing round, I increased my score to a pathetic 35. Uh, Neil is at 60, and Jeff has increased his lead to 80. So good job, guys. On to round two. Round two, question one, NCAA mascots. What specific college mascot gets its name from the name given to free state guerrilla fighters during the Civil War? More recently, it can be used as a nickname for anyone from that particular state. I think I've got an answer. Okay. Uh, I'm way, I'm way lost here. I'm just gonna go. Uh, are you locked in? Mm-hmm. I'm locked in. I'm just gonna go Tar Heels. Uh, yeah, I. For some reason, in the beginning, I was thinking of like Gamecocks, but I don't think that has anything to do with the Civil War. But then I know, um, I believe it's Texas A&M, maybe, I, or I don't know what school it is, but the Aggies and Aggies sounded like it could be like a group of people. So yeah, I changed mine from the Volunteers to possibly the Mountaineers to finally the Aggies because I th- I think you might be onto something with that, Neil. Nope. The correct answer is Jayhawk. Oh, Ooh. Kansas. That's okay. I'm going to get all the rest of this round correct. I imagine so. I have a feeling. <laughs> Starting with number two, the category is the root of all evil. What is the currency of India, Pakistan, and a few other Asian countries, as well as Hyrule? <laughs> We're good. Isn't Hyrule fictional? Yes. Okay. Oh, that's Zelda, Fic- right? Largely <clears throat> fictional, yes. If you believe in it, it's real. That's right. That's true. I know I always uh, broke as many pots as I could to try to collect these. <laughs> you just, <laughs> just snatching the green ones all day. Okay, I'm locked in. You don't do that anymore. Money's basically useless in the new Zelda. So Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, Neil. Oh, uh, I just said uh, rupees. I also said rupees. Rupees. Rupees all around. Rupees is correct. Right now, 70 rupees makes up about a dollar U.S., Hmm. And about 50 rupees buys a Hylian shield. (laughs) Good good exchange rate. That's not much. Number three category is free points. 
1997, a physician named Andrew Wakefield published an article in a prestigious medical journal linking vaccines to cases of autism. Although revolutionary at the time, this paper has subsequently been completely discredited due to procedural errors, financial conflicts of interest, and ethical violations. Completely Wake- discredited. Completely, completely discredited. Completely discredited. Wakefield has lost his license, and the paper was formally retracted. Question. Do vaccines cause autism? And, for 10 bonus points, what was the vaguely medieval-sounding name of the publication in which that erroneous paper appeared? Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Did you say <laughs> <laughs> yes you heard that correctly yes and what was the bonus question <laughs> what is the name what is the vaguely medieval sounding name of the publication in which that erroneous paper appeared right from the start i was like andrew wakefield i was like oh that was the guy who was discredited for um for his faulty research mm-hmm. and uh, so wait did andrew wakefield become andrew wk and or no no it, okay no Andrew W.K. I, I, is a great man. That's what I hear. <laughs> so uh, are we all locked in on the bonus question then? I think the uh, the, the main question is, is locked. Bonus. I'm trying to vaguely medieval. Question. Do vaccines cause autism? Uh, I'm going to go with no on that one. And uh, as the uh, bonus answer, I'm going to go with the Inquisitor. Oh, oh that's, a, that's a great way to go with that answer. Uh, yeah, I put uh, in a, an emphatic no, and then I put Camelot. Yeah, I went out on a limb here, I guess, to know. Um, but I said Medici for my bonus. Good guesses. Um, the answer to the first question is, in fact, no. Ooh. It appeared in a publication called The Lancet. Oh. that's Okay, yeah. that's Sounds about right. Yeah. All right. Number four, colorful names. What sea makes up the entire northern coast of Turkey? All right, I'm going to go with the Black Sea. Uh, I wrote down indigo, red, and black sea, and I, for some reason, thought the black sea was like the only one that's a real sea. Oh, is that true? <laughs> well, good, good. I guess not good for me. I put, I said the red sea. Are you saying the red sea is not a real sea? No, I'm just being funny. Oh, okay. Um, I, I wanted to go a sea name, but I believe the Caspian Sea is to the east of there. We uh, also can't say that word on the podcast. I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm inclined to agree with Ken. I. I believe this is the Black Sea. It is the Black Sea. All right. Connected to the Mediterranean by the Straits of... Don't remember. Trying to think. All right. Well, (laughs) uh, looks like I am so far betting a a perfect uh, game since I declared it after that first question. We'll see if it lasts. Babe Ruth calling a shot over there. Number five, category is not Al Gore. What is the first name of the man who, in 1995, created an email distribution list for his friends in the Bay Area to discuss local events? It became a web-based service in 1996 and now exists and serves 70 countries. I've got a guess. When you said mail distribution list, I was thinking of like MailChimp, but I doubt his name is Mail or Chimp. Um, Also, we don't want to talk about your other mail distribution services ideas. (laughs) They're on discount this month, though. It's Halloween themed. Uh, I think, oh God, uh, I'm, this is completely wrong. I'm just going to say Jeeves because you have to ask Jeeves. And I think this was a guy named Craig. As do list. I. Oh no. I think it was Craig <laughs> of Craigslist fame. It was, it was a guy named Craig. And you can, of Craigslist. You can find many mail uh, distribution services on Craigslist. That's what I was going for earlier that yeah, you completely under, missed. Under casual encounters. <laughs> Not anymore, actually. They've changed... A lot of that with legislation, which is not jovial and actually quite sad. So mm. we will move on to the next question. Mm. That's Sorry. my job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my, my apologies. Stepping on your toes. Number six. What is it good for? The Battle of Balakalava was part of which war? The battle was part of the siege of Sevastopol, 1854 to 55, to capture the port and fortress of Sevastopol, Russia's principal naval base on the Black Sea. Which is on the northern coast of Turkey. Okay, I'm locked in. Uh, I'm locked in, I guess. When you said balaclava, or ba- balaclava, 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 that uh, <laughs> our, <laughs> baklava. <laughs> our friend, our friend messes with us, and I, I never remember which one is the mask and which one is the Greek delicacy. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you uh, eat a balaclava and get back to me? <laughs> All right, so we're all locked in. Um, this is a war that has a lot of trivia about it, but it's a war I know all about. 
Uh, I'm going to go with the Crimean War. Ooh, okay. Um, I thought because of the B-A-L-K and the clue that maybe it was the Balkan War. Is that a uh, war? I don't know. I think this is... Is this the uh, the Light Brigade War? That would be Crimean. Yeah, yeah. I, I can't remember. Um, if that's the case, then I'm, I think you're right. But I, I went Franco-Prussian. And the correct answer is the Crimean War. Yeah. Crimean River over here. I, <laughs> well, he's still Question number seven. In 2002, the Kingdom Center in Riyadh won the Emporis Award. That award has been given since 2000, and other winners include 8 Spruce Street in New York and the Shard in London. What specific type of structure is the Emporis Award given to? Okay, I'm locked in. I feel like I know this. Those, those uh, 8 Spruce Street and the... I know all three of these buildings. And the Shard. Oh, good. At least they're buildings now. I was going to say bridge, but now I'm not going to. Um, oh, man. All right, I, I'm okay. I'm in. So I believe these are all examples of um, high rises or skyscrapers. The Shard being the, the tallest building in London. The building in Riyadh is, I think, possibly the one of the largest buildings in the world because it has a lot of floor space on like the bottom 50 floors. But that one's also about 150 stories or something like that. Some crazy number. Well, the uh, streak might come to an end here. I said it was all uh, for great real retail spaces. Uh, I didn't know. I, I thought maybe they were museums. They are, in fact, skyscrapers. All right. Jeff's, Easier than Jeff's back on the board. One's for Jeff. The one in Riyadh has the largest clock face in the world. Cool. Number eight. The category is the fighting game. On a standard U.S. Monopoly board, what space is perhaps fittingly between the two priciest properties, Boardwalk and Park Place? Yeah, I'm locked in. Oh, we talked about this. Yeah, um, and I screwed this one up royally last time. But not again, or possibly again. We'll find out. I have no idea. I, I'm going to lock in. Um, Monopoly may be the fighting game, but I always enjoyed the crying game board game. Yeah, there always was a the nice board game based the on end. the crying game. It was yeah, yeah it's yeah. a very strange game. Um, but uh, <laughs> I'm going to go with the uh, luxury tax. Oh, that makes a lot more sense. I, I don't know why I put this. I don't even think it's a, a point on the board, but I put the railroad. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is the luxury tax. It is the luxury tax. Bound to get it right some of the time. And yeah, we I heard it like between the time I wrote the question and now I heard you guys answer that on the podcast. We were like, let's see if they still remember it. Absolutely. That's, that's, that's totally a fair bet, game. Yeah. <laughs> Number nine in Soviet Russia. In the most Russian thing ever, a company has announced vodka being made from water and rye from what area? I'm locked in. I don't know. I don't know where to approach this from. So I'm just going to say uh, Moscow. Uh, I'm assuming if, if this is right, it's complete guess. But um, uh, I'm assuming that Imagine Dragons will be big fans of this vodka. If this is true, um, I said Chernobyl. Uh, I w uh, yeah, I'm not sure about that. Uh, that's also in the Ukraine. But um, I just figured it'd be hard as nails. So I said Siberia. Oh, no, Neil got it. It is from the Chernobyl exclusion zone. With the pop music tie-in. Nice job. I guess the exclusion zone extends into Russia, but... <laughs> I never said it was all in Russia. It's just a Russian company that's doing it. Mm, just like sucking up groundwater from under Chernobyl. What <laughs> <laughs> could go wrong? Number 10. The category is Snap Snap. What American photographer with an alliterative name is famous for shots of Yosemite National Park including Moon and Half Dome. One of my favorites. I'm locked in. I'm in. American photographer. Um, I don't know a lot of photographers. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, uh, I'm going to pass here. <laughs> uh, it was actually a favorite uh, photographer of the uh, person whose quote you read in that yearbook over there, Ken. Um, it is uh, Ansel Adams. Not to be confused with Neil's favorite actor in Baby Driver, I said Ansel Adams. <laughs> and the correct answer is indeed Ansel Adams. Uh, Ansel Elgort is actually named after Ansel Adams because his dad is a photographer. Is that serious? That's true. So speaking wow. of... I thought you were making that up. <laughs> so speaking of that uh, yearbook, so yeah, I was looking through one of Neil's uh, old yearbooks and uh, I read a quote. Uh, in the foreign language hall, senior Neil Fisher and junior blank... Stare and smile at each other while taking a break by his locker. I remember blank. <laughs> I thought you were going to say something worse. That's not that bad. It's just another interesting caption about Neil. I flipped to 
to a random page in the yearbook and kneels in it, of course. Yeah, most of the pictures of me in the yearbook are, are in a hallway staring at someone and smiling, probably. Yeah. yeah. You spend a lot of your time staring? Uh, I do spend a lot of time staring. Uh, actually, in college, uh, we had this crazy oh boy, idea. here we go. <laughs> yes. We had this crazy idea that we would uh, we would email the Guinness Book of World Records to come out, and there was a guy on my floor who was sort of a recluse and sort of a hoarder in his dorm room, and there was just clothes everywhere, and both of us were like, "Hey, I think we can actually stare for a really long time without blinking." He's like, "All right, I can do it. How long? Do you, how long do you want to say?" And I said, uh, "I don't know. Let's see how long we can do it." So we stood in the hallway. Everyone was around us, and we stared together uh, for about like twenty-seven minutes. And uh, uh, I was crying because I had contacts in, but it helped lubricate my eyes. So from that moment, I was like, I think I can do this for a long time. The Guinness Book of World Records uh, shot us down. But then at work last year, I told someone this story and the guy said, I don't believe it. Can you stare at me for 10 minutes? And I said, yeah, I can. I don't want to, though. And he's like, well, do it. I don't believe it. So I did it. And I was basically like partially blind for about two hours afterwards. Did he buy you lunch? He didn't. They all just laughed and said, I can't believe Neil did it. And then I was like seeing stars for the rest of the day. Well, Neil might have been the laughing stock then, but I'm the laughing stock now because I'm in last place with 95 points. Uh, Neil is uh, just barely ahead of me with 100, and uh, Jeff, commanding lead with 150. Oh, I didn't realize you were that far ahead. It was an excellent transition, Ken. Thank you. I've been working on it. <laughs> All right. Your categories for the final round. Ravens, 49ers, Giants. Jets and Bears. I'll let you in on a little hint here, Ken. These are all football teams. <laughs> is the <laughs> is the question for five uh, which bear is best? <laughs> False. Black bear. Definitely okay. the polar. <laughs> all right, the wagers are now in, and I am crossing my fingers that this first one is an Edgar Allan Poe question. So let's have them. Boy, have I got good news for you. All right. The titular bird in Poe's best-known poem spends most of the story taunting our narrator while, quote, perched upon a bust of Pallas just above his chamber door. In Greek mythology, Pallas is most commonly associated with which Greek goddess of wisdom and war? Number two, 49ers. What was the surname of the 19th century pioneer that first discovered gold in California as immortalized in song by Dan Fogelberg? Number three, Giants. Wide receiver Plaxico Burris ended his time with the New York Giants in 2008 after he did what in a Brooklyn nightclub? <laughs> I'm finally happy to know one. I thought this was going to be uh, about like mythological Giants. All right, what's next? Number four, Jets. A kugel ball is not something Gwyneth Paltrow will try to sell you, but instead a stone ball floating on a thin layer of water. The largest kugel ball in the world is right there with Aaron in Richmond at their science museum, which is also the home of this type of stealth aircraft, which shares its name with an early 2000s alt rock band. And bears. After we watched him grow up as Harry Potter, Daniel Radcliffe broke into the world of big boy theater when he and his magic wand starred in what Peter Schaefer play, <laughs> which debuted in 1973 and won the Tony Award for best play in 1975. So as we're looking through the, these answers, uh, we always invite you to come join us over at the crop. Uh, as we said earlier, we're up to about 666 members, uh, almost ready to break 700. So come join us over there. We see a lot of new faces that we haven't met before, and we're really happy that you're joining us over there. You can uh, check out some Patreon announcements, episode threads, uh, some memes, and some other uh, fun things going on. So make sure to come join us over at uh, Facebook with the crop. And uh, with that sound effect, the answers are in. Number one, Ravens, the titular bird in Poe's best-known poem, spends its time chilling on a bust of Pallas. Pallas is most commonly associated with which Greek goddess? Start right. with Ken. All right. As I said, I was hoping this was an Edgar Allan Poe question. I got my wish. Uh, I bet 30, and I believe this is Athena. Oh, that's right. Um, I wagered uh, zero all the way down, just for the record. I wanted to uh, wait in the wings like a little finger and hopefully pounce at the end uh, and not die. But uh, I went uh, with Artemis, which I know is incorrect. Um, this will come up again later. I wagered 15 all the way down, so I plexico burst. But um, <laughs> I, uh, I said uh, Hera for, uh, for this for 15. Well, the answer was Athena. Number two, 49ers. 
What was the surname of the 19th century pioneer that first discovered gold in California as immortalized in song by Dan Fogelberg? All right, I only bet 10 on this one. Uh, I did not know the answer, so I just put uh, uh, somebody who's not known for gold, but more known for oil, and that's Daniel Plainview. I'm an oil man. My son, H.W. <laughs> Uh, I bet zero again, and I didn't know. I just, when I heard song and immortalize, I put bad Leroy Brown. That's a good one. Uh, that's Jim Croce. Um, wagering 15. I can't remember who Dan Fogelberg is. I know he's a musician. I'm trying to remember the band or groups he's associated with. Uh, but I thought of a traffic song. Uh, so I said, uh, John Barleycorn. <laughs> nope. The answer is Sutter. The song was Sutter's Mill. Mm. If you said that was a trivia man, you would agree. <laughs> <laughs> You're drinking up my points over here. Number three. What did Plexco Burris do that ended his career? Um, so I thought this was going to be about mythological giants. So I wagered big and put 30. It was not. It was a kind of a sports question. I don't know this guy or what he did. So I said he was murdered. <laughs> and that ended his career. Uh, I wagered zero. That would do it. That would do it. As, uh, as Jeff said, uh, that'd be... Uh, Kill him in a heartbeat, right? You said, yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, I, I wasn't sure. I put I wager zero. I think this happened to him, but it also happened to many players. I, I want to say he shot himself, and then he couldn't play anymore. So that's what I put. I, uh, I wagered fifteen, and much like I said earlier, uh, I pulled a plexico burst on this round, and I believe he shot himself. He did. He had a gun in the waistband of his pants and shot himself in the leg in a nightclub. I think he's fortunate he shot himself in the leg. To be perfectly honest with yeah, you, yeah, <laughs> could have been a very different story. Yes. Number four, the type of stealth aircraft which shares its name with an early 2000s alt rock band. Yeah, no idea on this one. Uh, for 10 points, I put supersonic. Uh, oh, and now, now that they say the clue, I think I figured it out. But uh, I wagered zero again. Uh, I wanted to go a Treyu, but I just don't think they were popular enough to ha have a plane, uh, a same, similar name as a plane. But so uh, it's from Never Ending Story. Yes, correct. Uh, but I uh, I put down Ken's uh, fifth favorite John Woo film, uh, Broken Arrow. Hmm. Um, I wagered 15, as I mentioned before. Um, I, I couldn't think of anything, so I, I went with the Raptor. And the answer is the SR-71 Blackbird. Yeah. Oh, that's right. That was a band, wasn't it? Blackbird. Yeah, I figured no, it out. No, it was SR-71. Oh, that's the name of the band. band. Yeah. yeah. I totally forgot about them. So did everybody else, I think. Yeah. And number five, uh, Daniel Radcliffe broke into the world of big boy theater when he and his wand starred in what Peter Schaefer play? All right. I, I kind of know this, and I'm just kind of sound it out. I wagered 10, and I'm going to put uh, Equus. Equus? E yeah. Yeah, I can give you that one. I wagered zero. I put Equus. That makes a lot of sense. Equus, Equine is horse. Um, so make whatever inferences you will from there i uh i wagered 15 <laughs> but i couldn't think of it and uh i because i've never never seen it it wasn't familiar so i uh i lost 15 points on that don't get hung up on that uh. <laughs> <laughs> guys if you're, if you're not getting it he shows his penis in the play guys <laughs> shows his penis. yeah it is equus Okay, so I lost just a little bit of points there. I ended up with 85. Uh, Neil stayed exactly where he was with 100. And Jeff just eking out the win. I lost barely. quite a lot. But thank you, Plaxico Burris. Never thought I'd say that. Uh, 105 for Jeff, making him today's cream of the crop. You know that I'm the cream of the Ooh, crop. That was close. Yeah, good job, Jeff. I love that Jeff wins the game by a mere five points on a sports reference, which is very fitting today. And, you know, I started this game out really uh, poorly and uh, I kind of turned it around. So I feel pretty good about that. I think I woke up in the middle of the game. <laughs> yeah, well, that's good. I mean, you, you, uh, you know, exercised uh, the demons and uh, you're good. Yeah. A lot of fun questions. Thank you very much to our hosts. Great today. game. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, people, some people know where to find you, at least the, the ones who do listen to the show. But uh, please tell everyone anywhere that they can find you and find the show. The Sports Trivia Faceoff. We're on our, we have a Facebook group, the Sports Trivia Faceoff fan group or sportstriviafaceoff.com. Or just go wherever fine podcasts are served and search for Sports Trivia Faceoff. All right. Great. Yeah, and uh, for those of you in the uh, Richmond, uh, Virginia area, Aaron, they can find you over at Orange Cat Trivia. Is that right? 
Yep. You can also find me on Orange Cat Trivia on Facebook and Instagram from anywhere in the world. But I host a game at Castleburg Brewery on Thursday nights. Awesome. Well, make sure you go say hi to Erin. And if you do, say Triviality sent you. So she'll swiftly slap you in the face. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, we appreciate uh, uh, your support, both of you, uh, not only on Patreon, but just for being uh, longstanding friends and uh, supporters of the show. So thank you for that. Um, as we said, Matt is uh, trying to get some uh, special Gatorade for Patrick Mahomes. And if he does well today, it's because of Matt. And if he doesn't uh, for your fantasy league, it is because of Matt. So uh, we hope uh, to see him again soon. But uh, for Jeff, Ken, Brent, and Aaron, my name is Neil. And that was Triviality. When he said Eddie Betts, I was like, oh, man, that's a great character. And like, hey, I just want to know the line. All right, just give me the line. I ain't going to bet. <laughs>